Welcome to this presentation on the auditory system. Uh, first, I want you to understand the basic components of the uh, ear. And uh, we'll begin with the outer ear. Everything shaded is uh, a part of the outer ear, so the most prominent structure is external, and that is the uh, auricle. And then that'll uh, collect uh, sound waves and then uh, funnel those sound waves into the uh, external acoustic meatus. And then those sound waves will um, strike the tympanic membrane or eardrum. The uh, middle ear uh, is shown in through here. And it is characterized by the uh, presence of the three very tiny ear ossicles. And the middle ear will uh, connect to the uh, uh, pharynx through the uh, pharyngotympanic tube that we see here. And then lastly, uh, we have the inner ear. And the inner ear is going to house the uh, machinery or the cellular architecture uh, that's responsible for the generation of action potentials uh, that will allow us to perceive what we hear. Uh, there is a clinical application. Uh, for you to understand uh, with respect uh, to the uh, tympanic uh, membrane. Uh, and this, uh, this procedure that we're going to briefly describe and why you might want to do it is referred to as a tympanostomy. Uh, and this is uh, essentially the insertion of an ear tube. And if we take a look down here, you see the tympanic membrane. Uh, and then you have the tube or grommet uh, right in through here, allowing a communication then between the middle ear and the external ear. Uh, this procedure uh, can be done if uh, an individual, particularly a youngster, has recurrent ear in infections. Uh, this would then help reduce the, the pressure because the fluid buildup in the middle ear. And it would also allow the drainage of that fluid and any accompanying uh, pus as a result of the chronic ear infections. And uh, since the goal would be to uh, eliminate the infection, uh, this allows for antibiotic drops to be um, inserted into the ear canal, the external acoustic meatus, and then actually pass through uh, the ear tube into the middle uh, ear where they can be effective against the microbes that are causing the infection itself. Uh, the ear ossicles that are prominent uh, features of the middle uh, ear um, can be remembered by the can't miss MIS uh, mnemonic. And so this describes the order of the ear ossicles from the tympanic membrane uh, to the oval window, uh, which is the entry or the transmission of sound waves into the cochlear uh, apparatus. Uh, the M stands for malleus, and we see the malleus highlighted here. Uh, it does have a component that is attached to the tympanic membrane. So when the tympanic membrane receives the, the sound waves, uh, it will start a movement of the malleus in the beginning of the ear uh, ossicle chain. The eye in this is the incus, and now we see it shaded. And then the final structure uh, is the stapes that resembles uh, a stirrup that we see shaded as well. Uh, so the purpose of these uh, ear ossicles is for the osseous conduction of sound waves. When those sound waves strike uh, the tympanic membrane, it starts to vibrate and then that get, uh, causes the ear ossicles uh, to vibrate uh, as well. That vibration is conducted to the oval window and then uh, uh, into the uh, cochlear apparatus. The ear ossicles are, um, have uh, muscles associated with them that attach to them. Uh, one such muscle is the tensor uh, tympani. We see the tensor tympani here shaded, and it will uh, attach to the malleus. It is uh, innervated by the uh, mandibular nerve, uh, which is V sub 3, 
and this is one of the nerves or divisions of cranial nerve number five, the trigeminal nerve. The uh, stapedius uh, is another muscle uh, within uh, the middle ear. It attaches to the stapes. It is not shown in this illustration. It is uh, innervated uh, by a, a small branch of the facial nerve. Though these muscles are very small uh, in size, they do have a, a function in that when they contract, uh, they will uh, reduce the oscillations that occur between the ear ossicles, and by doing that, they will uh, attenuate sound wave conduction through the middle ear. If these are, uh, if one or more are paralyzed, uh, then one has an increased uh, sensitivity to sound, and that would be termed hyperacusis. Mm -hmm.